You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and yep, still blonde. Rob, still bald. Yep, well, at least, you know, they don't think that because you're bald, you're stupid. So uh, I got that hanging over my head. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever. Uh, Anyway. Um, Thank you for joining us. Super glad to be sitting here in these chairs, hanging out with you, and really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. Get those questions in, askdroneu.com. Definitely ask them. Uh, Today's question uh, is going to be brought to you by our experience training. Are you ready to take on real world drone jobs and be tested and learn from what we all hate to learn from, which is failure. Uh, I'm talking about joining us for an experience training in Austin, Texas, where you won't have to deal with a mask mandate. And also you can go through about four days of drone training and then go through an actual drone job and be graded on that. And winners do get a cash payout, which is nice. That said, it's also an opportunity to do coaching and consulting uh, that's included in the price at drone uh, for the experience training, excuse me. You'll also be staying on site where myself, Rob, and some of our other trainers will be staying as well. So it's one of those trainings you absolutely do not want to miss. We've got a great video explaining the entire thing. If you go to experience.thedroneu.com, check it out. You will not want to miss it. Trust me. This is one of those like softball underhanded pitches of like, no, seriously, this is like our fly-in just only for a small group of people because so many people have been asking for that. So you're not going to want to miss it. I promise. I promise. I literally can't wait. I'm looking forward to I it. I am too. Hey, Paul and Rob. Hey, it's Larry here from Orange County, California. And I've been a Astro New listener for years now. And you guys are doing a great job providing up-to-date service to the drone community. But I've got a question. So recently we moved our business off of the Inspire platform to the Air 2S with the smart controller. And we want to continue our dual controller operations, but right now only the Mavic 3 Pro uh, at the consumer level platform, other than the Inspire 2. So do you guys know of any upgrade firmware fix in the future that will allow us to use dual controller operations with the Air 2S? Appreciate your thoughts. Thanks again, enjoy the show. Larry, thank you very much. As always, you took a few minutes to get in there and ask a question, click the little record a question button, and tell us what's on your mind. We appreciate that. We do. Um, This is an interesting one, and uh, I'm afraid you're probably going to be disappointed, but we're truth tellers here at DroneU. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. let's tell some truth. Yes. um, I am... Might want to go back to the Inspire platform? Depends on what your motivations are, right? I yes. So I'm struggling to answer this one only because one, I have a bias against dual operator uh, jobs um, because I have consistently beaten out the competition and getting smoother, more complex shots by myself rather than a two person team. Because one thing I will say to Larry is, if you have a good two person team and you've breached that. Uh, communication boundary, which takes years to build, then honestly, well done, man. Well done, well done, well done. Uh, Honestly, I think that it says a lot about you and your ability to work with you, which is nothing but compliments. Um, That said, I do have an intrinsic bias against uh, dual ops. And I am surprised uh, that uh, consumers would expect a consumer drone to offer uh, dual operator um, functionality. I and mean, it's a very complex system of receivers and transmitters speaking to one another and daisy chaining. Um, it is very, very, very complex. That said, you know, the Mavic 3 Cinna, um, I, have, I have only in passing heard of a dual operator system with that. I don't know if it's actually there or not. 
Um, and even if dual operator is possible with the Mavic 3, which I am not sure it is, I personally wouldn't do it because you're going to get so much more out of the Inspire. If the Inspire is not good enough for you, then you need to go to FreeFly Systems Astro. Um, I don't know if that's dual operator either. Uh, I would assume it is, um, but I don't know. And honestly, if that's not good enough for you, then you just need to go balls to the wall. And you need to pick up uh, the FreeFly Alta X, which is dual operator. Which is very expensive. It is very expensive. It's also a badass drone. Um, again, I know it's not called collective pitch. Was it cyclical pitch that they have? on? I mean, like, FreeFly's drones, I mean, if there was a Top Gun drone, like, everyone in the 80s was like, oh, my gosh, the F-15 Tomcat, it's, like, the best plane ever and now we've got the f-35 which takes off vertically uh so you know so i mean like things do change progress uh yeah but also f-35s fall off the back ends of aircraft carriers i don't know if you saw that video um it, meaning that everything does ultimately come down to the user okay absolutely but uh i would say if there was a tomcat of drones i would give it to free fly right now because that technology where the props can articulate and adjust their pitch mid-flight and they have it on like all their drones now. Autonomously? Meaning you're, are you through the controller telling it to do that or it just it's reading the environment? So let me put it to you this way. If I go into like 75% forward pitch, okay, where the drone is at like a 30 degree pitch it forward. It can do that? Oh, yeah. 75%? Like 75% power on the stick oh. going into, say, a 30-degree okay. pitch. Okay. Okay? You go to 100%, and it's almost perpendicular to the ground. Wow. That, I mean, like, you literally can go from 60 to 100 miles an hour like that. So and the props would have to articulate, articulate for that to happen. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it is a really smart system. And if you think about it, they built that on a, a flight controller that had, that had never been done before, which, again, illustrates the importance of software. Mm. It, impor it, it illustrates the importance of having a good software engineering team that's not confined by the bounds of what's already been done but is rather utilizing those systems to further push the envelope. Interesting. Huh. So all of that to say, don't expect the Air 2S to have a dual controller set up. Especially when the proof is in the pudding with the industry that these smaller consumer drones are actually offering less and less, not more and more. So I think that that is a very safe assumption. Yeah. And... um you know, dual operator is an expensive feature, and you've got to be prepared to pay for that. Well, it also begs the question why they went from the um, Inspire platform to the two, the Mavic Air 2S. Oh. So I, I don't think know. I, we're just uh, not enough information here. I mean, I probably i am guessing it's because the Air 2S has a pretty decent camera, right? I mean, it does. It, not to your standards. Don't get all... Well, it doesn't ever compare to what's on the Inspire. Right, right. But it might suffice for what they are doing. Yeah, let's... And that is a very reasonable and feasible thing. A hundred percent. And let's also try to put ourselves in their shoes. It could be a cost basis thing. Well, of course. You know, the Inspire 2 is very expensive to run. A set of batteries is going to set you back 400 bucks. Yeah, and if you you're know, trying to build your fleet... Building it with a Air 2S obviously is going to hit the pocketbook significantly less than building an Inspire fleet. So, I mean, obviously. But well, and it goes back to that whole argument that so many people consume content on their phones. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. I don't know why we worry so much about the uh, the 4K and all that stuff because the phones just aren't giving that to us, anyways. Well, and even in the 8K drones that we see, like, there's so much aliasing in the footage. It's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's yeah. all marketing. It, yes. I feel like we live in this just, like, well said. marketing bubble that our lives are run on marketing. <laughs> you know what? I just kind of, I, I kind of had an epiphany as you said that because I am... I always get mad and frustrated at all the marketing hype. There's one particular company that I think of the most uh, in regards to this, at least in our industry, but they will go left unnamed and unscathed for today. But that said, uh, <laughs> but that said, you know what? Um, it reminds me of those crypto.com commercials where fortune favors the brave. You know what? Fortune favors 
the non-impetuous. Fortune favors the people who are willing to do their research, look at the devil in the details, and make wise, objective decisions, even if it does negate their emotion. But we have to remember that any decisions made in emotion typically are not adequate. Uh, you know, fortune favors the. What does our commercial say? Fortune favors the brave. That's lame. It's some Roman crap. That is so lame. Rome failed. <laughs> <laughs> and what we will it? too if we keep making the same damn mistakes. <laughs> Crypto.com said that? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know what? It actually randomly brought up a question. I got a question for all of you. Do any of you know of an advanced trading platform for Bitcoin? Because I am so sick of Coinbase. I can't see 50-day moving averages. I can't see RSI. I can't see the MACD. Like all the stuff that I look for. What about on balance volume? Like, come on, give me some indicators that I can actually make real world decisions on, not just to the moon. <laughs> it's coming. If it's, it might already be out there. Yeah, I was looking I at don't know. BitMEX or something. I, uh, this was a question I actually want to talk to you on the walk, but it was just way too cold for the walk and I wasn't feeling it today. Hey, so. some days are like that. Yeah. Anyways, um, Larry, I hope we've, well, I, I know, I actually know we've answered your question in this case, but. Uh, um, hopefully it's not too disappointing to re or discouraging. Yeah, and, and I mean, to recap, I think going back to the Inspire is honestly your most effective and efficient bet. Look at the Astro from FreeFly. And then I would also look at Watts Innovations Prism, uh, Badass Bird. Yeah, and let us know. I'd really like to hear from you maybe a little bit more detail as to how you're using it. And, uh, you know, in light of what you're saying about you don't even like the dual controller setups for various reasons. I'm sure there are very good reasons to do it. I have literally won over jobs on set by showing directors footage from super nice, awesome, dope hexacopters with a $30,000 camera and say, I can get smoother at the same exposure and get great stuff with better detail with an Inspire 2 and literally flew it on set right there and proved it to them. And they're like, done deal, you're hired. So, I mean, that's my empirical decision making, okay? So, emphasis on my. My. Yours might be different. I'm just an old man who likes my DJ high stuff. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't like change, Robert. <laughs> Nobody likes change. There's about 12 people in the world that like change. Yes. And all of that, them are evil. And on that bombshell, that's, that's going to do it for us today. <laughs> My name is Paul. I'm Rob. Es Mahina. Anyway, goodbye.